Hi, Victor. Today is December 30th, and uh, let's talk about the markets. I, I would say today was, a, for me, fairly an eventful day. It's the end of the year. The range is kind of small, 15 points. It's very choppy. It's one of those days where I think <clears throat> most of the people should just stay away from the market if they're day trading. And it is just too choppy and uh, too random. It's the day for the infrastructure, basically. Um, no big new events happened. The $2,000 bill is still blocked by Senate because McConnell really doesn't want to pass it unless it's combined together with the other two issues that for some reason he attached together. Uh, the repeal of the Section 230 and the Commission for Voter Fraud Investigation, which Trump still wouldn't give it up. So um, the, the, the only exciting thing today was gold was up, I think like three quarters of a percent. Uh, unfortunately, our conversation yesterday had te technical difficulties and we didn't get recorded, but we discussed that there is a very bullish seasonality for gold for today and tomorrow. So today was a nice bullish day for gold. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Victor, what do you think of today? Well, the market is, takes an inexorable path to vivid numbers. It's like a geographical gravitation the law of universal gravitation where the important constructal numbers are goals that the market has to reach. And we've been talking about the fact that in three of the last 11 years, the market closed at the highest price of the year. Now you might think that that's very unusual with 200 and 45 changes to have the last level be the actual highest, but um, by randomness, it would occur about one in 10 times. But in any case, uh, it would be nice if the market closed this year at the highest level ever, the highest level of the year. And, higher than any other level now. Three times it's tried to do that. It opened today at 1644 and that was an all time high. But then it went down 20 points and then at four o'clock, again, it was at an all time high at 26, 730, excuse me, 3730. So the open, the open yesterday and the open today and the close at four o'clock were all attempts to reach that constructor level of a new all time high. And I believe we'll have it tomorrow. That would be a very nice way to end the year. Everybody mm -hmm. will be very happy. And there's something very, um, very artistic about uh, closing at the highest level. And I noticed that um, Japan is, Japan is uh, at the 20, at the 12,000. Japan is about the 27,000. 900 level, so they're, they're 2,000 away from what would be the constructor number for them of 30,000, which they haven't hit in 30 years. Strangely, 
today NASDAQ was actually down 0.01%. So as, as hard as they tried, they finally got NASDAQ down. Crude is, is approaching the constructible number of 50. It's at 48.80. So everything is um, very artistic and um, very aesthetic. There's something rather beautiful about every about everybody talking about how this was the worst of all markets and it was going to all business was going to be shut down and right there. With the uh, progressives um, gaining the four, how it would how they were going to raise the capital gains tax by by forty percent, and how bearish that would be, and yet since the middle of March, the market's gone steadily up by seventy percent. And now we've actually gone two days without an all-time high. But it's so hard, it's so hard for the market to miss the all-time high that on those two days it tried very hard at the open. Um, it's only gone down a total of 0.1%. So we're actually six S&P points or 60 Dow points away from the all-time high. Now, we discussed several flies in the ointment. The, right. Vic, Vic, the Hansen who is the um, smartest guy in the room, not, not like a certain relative of a certain politician. Uh, he says that he believes that all the progressives are holding their fire and that they, they will come out in, in abundance with um, as soon as the Georgia election occurs. Now there's, there, there's something rather amazing happening. Every day, the prospect of the Democrats winning the Georgia election, taking one of the two seats gets higher and higher. The odds are almost one even now. Wow. It started out with about 80% that, right. the that the Republicans would win. And now it's 62%, 62% that the Republicans will win it down from 80%. And the late betting has all been on the Democrats. And as we will discuss later, the shops always put their money near the end, near the close, near the near the game starting, near the race going off, and it looks like all the shops are betting on the Democrats. So, with the progressives uh, likely to um, to demand their due, what? Victor Hansen suggests is that they will leak a lot of information about Hunter Biden, and they'll put a, that will put a lot of pressure on the big man to to have a, a proper investigation or to disclose all of his family interests and in his wealth and his houses and uh, 
and the brother and the son. How can how can a how can a man the son went in the present in in the his father's plane to many meetings in right. China. So it takes about 18 hours on the plane to, to make those meetings. And then within a day, um, a deal was involving billions and several million of emoluments was, how is it conceivable that the father and the son want to discuss what the son is going to do on those meetings? Right. So many, so many unlikely. Um, right. Plus, he had no experience. He had absolutely zero experience, addicted to drugs. It's not somebody people usually do business with anyway. In any case, that, that pressure, according, um, which uh, is likely to come from the D's themselves. And apparently the, the, the news, the leak of the quote tax investigation came from the D's, not from the R. So they, they, they revealed it. And you can expect more of that. We discussed the fact that margin debt is at a all time high. And the market has to gyrate. It can't go in one direction as it has since the end of March, because then the public will become too complacent with the bull side and there wouldn't be as much uh, stopping out margin calls and in general, um, public losing their enthusiasm for the market, especially all the new investors. Also, um, I posted today on my Twitter account, and I'm sure you've seen it, the uh, Harvard, Harvard Magazine, is offering to its, to its alumni the ability to, to invest in 10 different venture capital bundles that they've put together. Now there's quite a story about Harvard's investments. You wanna hear it? Absolutely. Okay, well, you would think that with, um, with all the smart people right. at, at Harvard that somehow they'd be on to this, but a few, and I, I'm, I, I haven't uh, checked all the facts um, recently, but the gist of what I say is true. But if I say anything that, um, puts Harvard in a bad light um, inadvertently, it will be counterbalanced by at least a dozen more things where I, where I won't mention that uh, that puts them in an even worse, worse light. Anyway, forgive me if I get one factor or another, one number or another wrong. But about 15 years ago, um, Harvard was paying quite a number of investment advisors uh, 10 times as much as any professor was, was making. I believe that the head of their employ of their management firm, which is all internal, might have received a hundred million dollars in bonus one year. 
Not bad. And uh, the professor didn't like that. So, uh, and in addition, that Harvard was hired uh, to teach the Russians about capitalism and to show them uh, show them the proper way to um, to move from government ownership to private ownership. And sure enough, Harvard did this by stealing a, uh, a good share of the money that they were supposed to spend on showing the Russians how to, how to, uh, to, to privatize. Mm -hmm. And one of the Harvard men was um, um, was prosecuted and there was a judgment against him for I believe it was 29.5 million. Wow. And a, a special um, a special former secretary of the treasurer insisted that Harvard pay the judgment against that person. Nice. I believe that person was um, was then re relieved of his um, responsibilities in the investment management firm and, and Harvard frequently does this. They, they'll get upset with um, with some of the uh, wrongdoing in, in their investment advisory for, uh, firm. So they'll fire the guy, but they'll then give another one and start, start them out, and they'll then invest a lot in his new fund. So it's, it's a boom when they, they fire someone. But in any case, what Harvard likes to do is to pay all its investment ma managers based upon how much money they make over and above what their bogey was. So if, a bond, if all bond funds have made 5% and one, and one advisor who's advising the bond makes 6% and say he makes, Harvard has an endowment in that time of about 30 to 40 billion. So if he makes an extra um, 20 million, they, they then go to the professors and they say, look, if we had uh, gone to the outside, uh, you know, we wouldn't have made that extra 20 million. Of course, a lot of the investment advisors, um, employees do worse than the bogey and they don't pay anything. but. But the problem with that is a very important thing. The difficulty of running a hedge fund is that unless you're in that rarefied group, it's very hard to raise money as a hedge fund. I remember when I had a, a hedge fund and that was typical, uh, my marketing manager was almost an equal partner because we called him Hat, because he was, um, and he was very effective, very effective um, investment. But he spends all his time bringing your activities to the attention of every conceivable buyer and pension funds and private foundations and uh, colleges and wealthy investors. And normally, uh, if you're receiving a 20% fee, you pay him 10% for raising the money. Now, Harvard has something like $40 billion under management. They don't charge the hedge fund, the advisor, anything for the money that uh, he's making. They say, well, here's $40, million, $40 billion, see, see what you can do with it. So there's no, there's no sales fee on that. And their returns are completely screwed up. So that's 
those are some of the, the problems. And Harvard, of course, they're always um, following the latest trend. They're the only, they're the only firm that can um, can take as admissions um, 15% of the Asians who apply there and, and reject 50% uh, of the Asians and all, uh, all of them on average have better scores than, than any of the, um, their average, their average um, admission and claim that it's because they, they found that the Asians that they rejected had a bland personality. You know. Now, as, as the Asians become wealthier and they're not, and I, I knew a lot of Asians who were uh, on, um, who got admitted to Harvard. And if you happen to uh, be the, the treasurer of the, of the Kuwait or the, the second in command in, in Indonesia, the bag man, those, those Asians got, got accepted. But it's incredibly difficult for an Asian to be accepted at Harvard and only, only at Harvard will, can they make the case that um, that, that it's not discrimination. They, they could get away with that. If it was some other ethnic or racial group, they wouldn't be able to get away with it. Racism is a funny thing indeed. Well, that brings me to the point. I, I've made a clarion call for all attorneys to take a course in statistics. Right. It's very, it's very sad that the president is, is ruining his reputation and he's showing himself to be interested only in getting reelected and he's not, has no interest whatsoever in whether the Republicans are going to win the Georgia election. And then while he's been fighting this losing battle, he, the, as mentioned, the R's have gone from 80% likely to win to now it's only it's, it's close to even. And his calling for, for $1,200 to, to every member of the public after his, um, his, woke, his woke treasurer, Mnookin, had, had negotiated for four months and come up with a 5,500-page uh, bowl of uh, pork. Uh, out of the clear blue sky, um, the president wants it there to be double what they negotiated on themselves. And this, this made him, made, made the Republicans made look um, bad because they, they've all the, all the, uh, all the while been saying that we can't spend all this money that the people uh, to bail out businesses that aren't making it, that right. it's, that's a bad precedent. Now, whenever there's a, a problem anywhere in the world, the precedent is going to be the government has to come in yep. um, and try to solve it by spending, by spending trillions and there's so much pork in, in the uh, bill. Um, 
example that is like 30, 30 million dollars for gender studies in Pakistan. Now, how the how the Hades is is that going on to have anything to do with the, the with a bailout? A hundred another hundred million right. to the Kennedy Center and another right. two museums. I mean, it's, it's, it's absurd. Crazy. But in the meanwhile, the president is, is hurting the party. He's sort of acting, um, if you might say, selfishly. And uh, the reason the reason that the R's lost the election is because. People didn't like him personally. They might have liked his policies, but they didn't like his persona. But I was getting to the point that all lawyers should have a course in statistics because all the courts that have rejected the appeals for based on fraud have not examined the statistical aspects of of the election and in right. a nutshell the problem was that on the night of the election at the 2 a 2 a.m the president the ours were leading in all the battleground states sometimes by a very big margin. Yep. And then a bunch of ballots came in with the R's uh, not present. And these ballots were inordinately in favor of the D's. Now, if you have 10,000 tosses of a coin, and the probability of a success is one half, and the head is like one, one half, then you expect to find 5,000 successes, 5,000 heads, 5,000 tails. And the variation, the likely variation around that 5,000 is 50. Mm -hmm. stand, they call that standard error. Now, when you have 10,000 votes in, and 6,000 go to one side and 4,000 to the other, the chances of that occurring by chance is one in a billion. And right. that's the kind of thing that no court has looked into when they say that you know they found no evidence of fraud. Well, you know, you don't expect a, a judge to understand the binomial theorem, but hopefully in the future, uh, lawyers will be trained to look at how, uh, the improbability of a run and exceedance from from the 50, well, in that, you know, it might be 52% that on one side or the other. And how that uh, shows that there's, there's quite a bit of um, fraud in it. Those, you know, they talk a lot about how um, the president, the, um, President's to be son was um, was banned from any media talk. There was all the media uh, refused to carry anything. But I'm the one person who believes that Sidney Powell has been ostracized. Also, she has a very good record. Uh, she yeah. runs. She runs a very good firm. And a lot of uh, her allegations seem seem very reasonable, but yet they they talk they talk of her as an idiot, you know. As a, as a, uh, right. But I think it's it's beyond understanding of statistics. 
I think people just don't want to deal with us because they're afraid. They don't want to rock the boat. It's it's too late. There is not enough time. It's all it's all done. No, so some of the courts, even though they may may understand statistics behind Trump's case, they simply don't want to take it. And I think Supreme Court doesn't want to be the deciding force in that uh, in that game. They they don't want to overturn the elections. So well, I can relate that to another of my uh, bugaboos. Uh, I believe that the main contagion here is not the virus, but it's the contagion of people in the deep swamp exerting their wokeness on other neighbors in the deep swamp. Right. So that the, I believe that you know, you start out with 95% of the government employees vote Democratic, and it, it's hard to go against them. Before, you know, they, they talk to their friends, uh, they'll cancel. Right. Yeah, right. And I believe that, that that happened in the Supreme, Supreme Court. Uh, they, they're afraid to, um, uh, hear the case um, because uh, everybody knows that Victor Hansen and, and all thinking people who followed it, that if Trump had won, there would have been riots all mm -hmm. over the country. It, it, yep. would have, it would have, every, every retail store would have been boarded up and, and broken into. By the way, one of the most important things, or I was going to say one more, one more thing to, to me, uh, the New York Post always has um, important uh, information about um, that affects the uh, stock market. To me, the most important thing that they had today was Oh yes. Who's getting the vi who's getting the vaccine? Well, there's been a special a special exception so that the members that two members of every congressman's staff get priority on receiving the vaccine. They they receive it ahead of the seniors, ahead of the uh, first responders. And that reminds me that we, we've come full circle to the way the way they handle things in China. <laughs> there's there's a famous story that there was a big typhoon and a flood and a father was carrying his son, saving him from drowning. But right next to him was the commissar of the of his local party, the the chairman of his hundred uh, hundred person cell, and he was drowning also. So the the person, the father, gave his son and put him in the ocean to drown, and he saved wow. he saved the party official. And here, wow. here it's just, the same, the same. We've gone to the level where the members of Congress are considered the most important people right. in the world. And as I said, the, the worst thing about the stimulus bills, aside from the fact that 
been trillions of dollars of waste, is it sets a precedent for the future. Now, whenever it is a problem in the economy, um, whenever there's a disaster, right, they're going to. Well, yeah. unlike our governor, who actually refused to take the vaccine, the Florida governor, um, which I think he's going to be running for president for sure in the future. He refused to take the vaccine and he is actually prioritizing all of the nursing homes and elderly people first before the general public and himself or his staff. Well, that is very commendable. Now, there have been a lot of changes in the market infrastructure today. Right. So another another amazing thing that you can't you can't take out an order that you've put in like if I put an order and it's five o'clock a limit order mm -hmm. then I can't change it until the market opens at six o'clock. Same thing between four fifteen and, and four thirty. Right. And you take take um, Sunday when the market for the market opened down thirty points, and it was down. It was there for about thirty seconds before it started rising to to a new high. So the the only people that can take advantage of that are, are the infrastructure, right. the big, the big uh, institutions and so on. Now, what, what has changed? The market's always changing. There's always evolution. What are some of the big changes? Um, we have um, the high frequency trading, which we've never had before. We have commissions that have gone down from five or 10 percent aside. To zero. To, to, well, yeah, but they're not zero because the fills are still probably worse than you. Yeah, but people I, don't I, care. I pay, I pay an, a nice commission rate on on all my trades. I, I could, um, and the main, the main VIG is paid to the CME. Uh, they charge right. something like $2.50 or so, but, it wouldn't do me any good to to get my broker to instead of charging me twelve cents um, aside over over and above the CMA fee. So it wouldn't get me any good if he sold my orders like the Robinhood people do, for which they pay sixty five million dollars. By the time they they sell the orders to the high frequency people. And they get um, they get edged out, and, and they don't have their fills. And right. Of course, of that it's it would be much better off paying a, a reasonable commission fee and having a, a broker try to actually get them the best price. For, what, what are the, Most people don't care because at the end of the year, if you do pay commissions, you see, I have paid so much commissions this year or this month, $1,000 or $10,000 for some people who trade frequently versus if the commissions are zero and the, the, that, that charge is lost in, in, in it versus commissions, they specifically a standalone line and people zone in on this and they feel better when they don't see that fee when it's blended in into the price or the spread or the big. I can tell you a great, a great story about that, about two players that decided to hire uh, a, a window man to cheat the other, the other guy that they were playing with. And, and they couldn't, they call him a, a mechanic and he was stashing the the cards of the the other side and 
and then they they played for a few days and they couldn't understand it uh, because they both were losing money even though they were um, each cheating each other. It turned out that they both were paying a uh, mechanic to cheat the other side and the only thing that they lost was the the commissions of the house the house rate now. Some of the other things that have uh, changed, we have Bitcoin, yes, currency, we have night trading, we have a lot of trading and volatility that we've never had. What, what else do we have that's new? Well, with the micro futures, not the mini, but the micro futures are definitely new and it allows lots of retail traders to do overnight trading. Uh, which they couldn't do before for the lack of capital. Also, we have weekly options expiring weekly, which also adds to, I don't even understand, gamma exposure, whatever. People blame the option markets for those parabolic moves in stocks like Tesla or Peloton or other Roku, Pinterest stocks that have gone up 500%, 700% this year. And speaking to that point, I think you have mentioned yesterday that there is an effect that if particular stocks run up a lot in one year, they're much less likely to go up as much in the next year. So it's, it's prudent to take profits. I, I, I said that Soros used to, he, he taught me several things. One of them was to always use two cans of tennis balls and uh, also, uh, he taught me um, to, to start the new year and do exactly the opposite of what you had done the previous year. That way, and of course, he also was very good at surviving, survival at all costs. Right. There are quite a few unpleasant stories about him on that, in that regard from the World War II era. There's night trading, there's 24 hour trading. Of course, there's been a move to woke now so that everything, that, everything that's woke is good. And then, um, uh, there's index trading. So all these things have changed now. The most important book that I've read recently is the Princeton Guide to Evolution. And it's a beautiful book has 25 chapters, has a glossary of, of a thousand words. And it very, every, every chapter has important aspects that all, all market people should know now. I've asked our official reader, Victoria, who's also the best trader in the house, I don't know if I if I talked to her, if I called her the uh, smartest uh, the smartest girl I know, she would probably reject object because I have I have six daughters and they're all very smart and but she's going to read the import the importance of evolution starting here and ending here and then just a section. One, two, three. Here to Okay, turn it over to the maybe you should ask her what she's buying now because every one of I stock. would like to. Every one of the stocks that she's bought is up 500%. No comment. <laughs> nice. Maybe you should let her manage your money. I, I should. I am going to throw it <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hi, Victoria. All right. So natural selection explains adaptation. The astonishing precision and elegance with which complex biological structures efficiently function 
calls out for explanation. The human eye can detect a single photon, allowing it to see a match lit at a distance of 10 miles on a dark night. The nostrils of a migrating salmon can discriminate a difference in concentration of the molecules characteristic of its home stream corresponding to one molecule more in one nostril than the other. The ears and brain of an echolocating bat can detect a returning echo less than a millionth as loud as the cry it emitted milliseconds earlier. And from that information, decipher the position, movement, and surface texture of a rapidly and erratically flying insect. Darwin's greatest idea, natural selection, explains the evolution of the myriad of such astonishing adaptations through the operation of simple mechanisms that can be readily observed. A triumph of human thought, it organizes and explains much of biology, strongly contributes to the impact of biology on other disciplines, and as a major scientific principle not contained in chemistry or physics, elevates biology to their rank in its power to explain the natural world. This section is called definitions and complications. Natural selection is a process of sorting by reproductive success that occurs in populations of replicating units, whether those units are molecules, cells, organisms, or larger units. Four conditions, all necessary and together sufficient, state when natural selection on a trait will occur and elicit a response. Number one, the units expressing the trait must vary in their reproductive success. Number two, the trait must vary among the units in the population. Number three, the correlation between the trait and reproductive success must be non-zero. Number four, for a response to occur, the trait must be heritable. Um, Yelena, why don't you uh, interview Victoria? Uh, ask, ask her for well, we don't want to put you on the spot, but maybe one question. Okay, uh, then one question. I don't come. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> ask, answer our question. She wants, she wants to know how, how you select flocks. Oh, one of my secrets. Well, you can give us at least a tip. What is your favorite right now? Or what was your favorite in a month ago? Anything would be interesting to see because you may have a completely different idea from Victor. So it's 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 interesting generationally just to see she's, the differences. She's made about 20 fold in Amazon, 10 fold in Tesla. And... So would you still hold those stocks or would you sell? Well, like, is that an investment forever or I'm is there any- I'm selling her to sell. I'm sorry? Um, she's oh. very shy. Very <laughs> no, that's, that's well, a shame. But, she, has, she has a great diction. It's a, she's very- uh, Well, the point, the point is that the market's always evolving and you have to always right. be uh, alert to the new things that are happening and how it's changing and how the infrastructure adapts to take your money. I mean, unless you, you understand all these principles and, and concepts, you can't uh, go on. Now, just before we go, I wanted to say the New York Post had um, a big article on, on how you should, how you should do your sports betting during the bulls and in a nutshell they say you should always bet on the dogs the underdogs and you should bet on the under because the public likes to bet on the favorite and they like to bet on points being scored and you should also bet on the rest on the smart on the sharp money that comes in right before the game. And, uh, each one of these has counterparts to how you should trade the market. In fact, it's my claim that the level of of knowledge and the, the level of ability, the uh, 
the sophistication of the sports betting is much greater than the sophistication of investment betting. And you could learn a lot more from the sports betting uh, by if you read Graham and Dodd and all the other books, especially if you skew reminiscence of the stock, stock market uh, invested by, by the Federal about, about Jesse Livermore. Uh, you, should, so you should follow sports betting. And, and sports betting is so accurate that if you can be correct on 52% of your bets, you win. And by the way, they say that under, betting on underdogs generally wins only 50% of the time, which is natural because they're so accurate. But during bowl games, especially during the ones that are on television, the underdogs win 52%. So you, you start out almost even by betting on underdogs. Okay, well, that's, um, what else is there about that? I'm going to, I'm going to play the market to set a, a new high and the closing day down. The volume was only, there's almost more volume in gold today than in right. the S&P. There's only 600,000 contracts traded in, in the futures. But. Right. I think in general, you have mentioned that the volume has been terrible lately, not just for the holidays, but that it's hard to execute uh, larger orders for you. Then it's well, that's a, that's a, um, a reflection of the house tape and the VIG, which of course is the main thing that mm -hmm. investors should uh, take into account if they're trading within the market. And, but the liquidity is even is much lower during a low volume day, and uh, of course. In, Right. In any market where there are just a few market makers, you can give up before you start. As they say, you should never play poker with a man named Doc, or you should never uh, trade uh, in an, an active market. But I'm going to play the market to um, close at an all time high. And if it doesn't close at an all time high, then there will be three days that have gone by without an all-time high. And 93% um, of the, the time since March has, um, a, a, has um, if you bought when there's three, three trading days after an all-time high and you held until it set the all-time high, uh, you would make money. And on average, you make something like two or three percent. So I'm going to give it a try at six o'clock, and that's exactly what the time is. Thank. What are you doing for New Year's? Um, it's new. It's a Russian tradition to have a, a family celebration. Usually, we just stay home, families around, and eat lots of food. Okay. Good luck. I'll, Thank I'll, you. Uh, we'll have a fast one tomorrow just to wind okay. up. Here. Yes. Sounds good. The market only is open um, until 1 at 1 a.m., 1 p.m. tomorrow. So it will be a short day. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. And we'll Bye. talk tomorrow. Okay. Bye.